Hey guys, Mike V from Reliable Automotive Equipment. Today we're going to be going over the IP7, otherwise known as the VAS 821-003. This MIG welder will do aluminum, it'll do MIG brazing, it'll do steel. Alright, quick start on the IP7. Turn the machine on from the back, make sure your gas is turned on. Make sure you have your regulator set for the diameter wire that you're using for the proper gas flow. Make sure you have the correct wire in for what you're welding on, the correct size rollers, the correct size tip on the gun. And quick start on the menu board is your gun is either going to be a standard MIG or pulse. You're going to use either the on off with the two arrows or the four step process on aluminum. Make sure you have the correct metal setting for the type of wire and most importantly the correct diameter of the wire in the machine and set your metal thickness and start welding. All right, we're going to be loading wire in the system. What we're going to do first is we're going to check the size of the roller wheels because they are set up for the diameter of the wire. So if we take this out and look at this, this is 1.0 diameter. The opposite side of this one is a 0.8 millimeter diameter wire. So we are using one millimeter wire that we're putting in the machine. So we want the 1.0 facing to the outside. Just slide these around to the pins line up, put the little plate back up into place, the little screw on it and the rollers are all set. So once we have the roller set, it's going to be just like loading on a regular MIG. We're going to take our wire and we're going to start feeding through. Come into the middle, go through the center section, go into the liner of the gun assembly, and now we can pull the rollers down, flip the lever up. On MIG brazing, we're going to be around number three on tension. If it was aluminum wire, we'd be around one and a half to two. So the wire is going to fit neatly into the rollers. It is going to go through very smoothly. And then make sure that the tip of the gun is also going to have the correct size tip on it so that you have all your wire matched up. All right, now we're going to be loading wire onto the machine. So on the front menu board here, we do have our gun activated for this side. We are going to go over to this part of the menu board where it shows the roller wheels and the wire coming through and just click down to that and the screen should say NFS 5.0. And now we can take the gun assembly and all we have to do is the wire is going to be rolling. There's no electricity rolling at this point. There's no gas coming out at this point and this is how we can load the wire to the machine. So just trim off your excess wire. We're going to get out of the setting of NFS. We'll just go back to regular trigger control. We're going to set our gas right now. We're going to turn the tank on. This does have capability of two tanks on the machine. So if you are doing steel, you can get an argon CO2 tank. MIG braze and aluminum does take straight argon. So there are two setups on the back. We have this one tied into this side. If I go to pull the trigger right now to check gas, wire is going to want to come out. We're going to just flip our red lever out of here to take the tension off the rollers. So now for pulling the trigger, I will still get gas flow and I can adjust my gas without having to worry about the wire moving out, especially if you're using a nozzle that sets on this way to check the gas flow the wire won't be in the way on it. Once we have gas flow set, I'm going to put my rollers back down and now we're going to go through the menu board. So on the menu board, if we look at our first setup here, this is just torch selection. These two items you're never going to use on this machine. This is a regular stick welder. This is a TIG welder for stainless steel. What we're interested in are these two. This is a standard MIG gun, like on your regular steel MIG water, it's called a short circuit. So when the wire comes out, it hits ground, it makes an arc, it creates heat, and it starts forming the bead. As soon as the wire gets burned away, the wire's continually coming out, hitting ground again, and that's what makes that sizzling sound as you're doing a MIG weld. The second one is pulse welding. 
A little bit different than short circuit welding. Instead of the wire hitting the ground area, as the wire comes out of the nozzle of the gun, it actually burns away the wire and it throws it into the weld as droplets. That is a pulse setting. That is double pulse or synchro pulse or uh, sometimes called frequency. And what that will actually do is that the machine will actually turn on and off so many times per second to actually get you a little bit more heat control. But be careful on that because that is manufacturer specific on the types of aluminum that you can weld on. So just a quick push of the button. We'll change each one of these around. It'll cycle through these other items also. So if we're on MIG brazing right now, MIG brazing will work off of a standard gun or a pulse depending on the manufacturer, what they require on that. The next one down is trigger control of the gun. We have two selections. The first one is two arrows up and down. That means the trigger is going to be on and off. That's it's very simple, just like a steel gun. The next set of four arrows is called a four step process. And that is used in aluminum because when you go to weld aluminum, it's too cold when you start, it gets up to temperature, then at the end of the weld it's too hot and you can't stop and start on an aluminum weld. It has to be a one-time deal. So on the four-step process, when we first pull the trigger, we can actually have a hotter setting come out than what you normally weld at to heat up the material to get it up to temperature, let go of the trigger about one to two seconds, and then it's gonna drop down to from a hot start down to normal welding temperature as you're going across the panel. When you get to the very end of the weld, and at this point your finger is off the trigger, when you get to the end of the weld, if you just stop welding, you're going to have a little divot in the plate because now it's too hot. So if at this time you pull the trigger and hold it, that will take your normal welding temperature and drop it in half to be able to fill in that little divot at the end without burning into more material. So that is called a four step process. On that, we can go into the menu board and we can do settings on our hot start and our cold ending, which I'm gonna show in a minute. The next set of parameters up here are the type of wire that you are running through the machine. So we have FE, which stands for iron or steel wire. The CRNI is chromium nickel or stainless steel. The ALMG is aluminum magnesium, which is a 5000 series material. The ALSI is an aluminum silicium, which is a 4000 series material. CUSI is copper silicone, better known as MIG brazing. And CUAL8 is copper aluminum, which right now I believe Mercedes is using on some of their structural products. So your, all your rolls of your wire have the designated materials listed on it, make sure that this setting is correct, otherwise you will have a improper uh, welding menu on that. The last item on here is diameter of the wire, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, and 1.2 when the light is blinking. So this is very important to make sure you have set it the correct diameter of the wire, because if you accidentally set you have 1.2 wire in the machine and you accidentally set it at 1.0, your wire speed is actually going to double trying to put out more material and it's going to weld really, really bad. So make sure that your settings are set for the type of products that you have in the board. To get into the menu up here, little menu button, if we just hold that for a couple seconds, it'll come up with the menu board. And just scrolling through this, this is gas preflow gas post flow, hot start level for our four step process, crater fill level for our four step process. Our hot start timer for the level of change is a half a second factory set. We're gonna leave it like that. Crater fill timer is gonna be half a second. We're gonna leave that one alone. Active and pause. This is more for setting up a uh, ongoing stitch welding process that most of us aren't going to use in the automotive industry. Active means that the, the gun will weld and we can set a timer on it for how long it welds and how long it stays off. So active and pause really aren't going to be used on this. The main ones we're going to touch is gas preflow, factory setting at 0.3 would not hurt to bump it up to around 0.5 
That gives you about a half a second of gas flowing through the gun assembly before the arc starts happening. Very important on aluminum to make sure that you have gas preflow set high enough so that you get rid of all the environment around it and you're going with 100% argon. Notice that the menu board always reverts back to itself. Just push it again to get back into it. So gas preflow, 0.5. Gas post flow is when you're done with the weld. Once you let go of the trigger, if you want gas to flow, you can dial in a timer over here. It is factory set at 1.5. That will help cool down the weld if you need it. Hot start level, four step process. When we first pull that trigger, we can set this as a percentage of what is actually our normal welding point. So this does not represent 144 amps. This represents 144% of our starting point, which is based on thickness of material. Hot start level. Next one, crater fill level. Same thing on this, that we can set our amperage a percentage, it is usually going to be around 50% lower on the aluminum side so that when you're welding at that normal temperature and you pull the trigger at the end, you're going to drop your power into half just to fill in that little divot area. The hot start timer, that is the time from the hot start when you first pull the trigger and you let go of the trigger, it takes half a second to ramp down. So that's just a slope value. And so on the hot start level and the crater fill timer, they're both going to be set at 0.5. You're good to go on all of them. So out of everything here on the menu board is basically gas preflow, your hot start level, your crater fill level, you're, you're good to go at that point. You can hit menu to get out of the menu. The last thing you're going to do is go over to have this light here highlighted on thickness of material and you can just change this by pushing the button. This is not setting amps, this is setting the thickness of the material. So on a 1.0 setting, it is automatically gonna set up everything on your welding program for your amp, your voltage, and your wire speed. If you're welding at 1.0 and it seems a little bit cold, just take it and bump it up to 1.1 or 1.2. That is going to set up all your parameters hotter for a, a better weld if that's the direction you wanna go into. If it seems a little bit too hot, back it down a little bit. So it's a very simple setup on thickness of material, gets you started where you wanna go. Your initial setup is thickness of material, bump it up, bump it down. If you find that you're not finding the exact amount between 1.0 and 1.1, you have one other piece on here on this knob. If I push this, this is going to give me arc length correction. Very simply, if we go negative, we're going to have a colder weld. If we go positive, we're going to have a hotter weld. And what this does, this changes where the wire comes out, how far out of the arc length it is coming in order to make this colder or hotter. This is only a fine tune adjustment once you've gone through your thickness of material. Do not go to this one and try and adjust it into place without having your uh, diameter uh, thickness of material dialed in first. Once you have everything set up on here, the last thing we're going to do is talk about the ground clamp. So on ground clamp area, if we look above this, this is negative on this side. This is positive on this side. This is used for doing the stick welder or the, the TIG welder setup. This is blocked off so you can't accidentally put your ground wire onto the positive side. This is just like a standard ground wire on your MIG. Put it in, turn it to lock it, and you're set with your ground. Okay guys, that wraps up the IP7. If you have any questions, call the number on the screen, visit our website for more videos. Have a great day guys, thank you.